forms are primarily a client-side feature. Libraries like React Hook Form and other form libraries run on the client side. But what if I tell you, you can build forms completely on the server side without having any client side JavaScript code using React server components? Well, that is what we're gonna learn today. We are going to build a fully server side rendered form using React server components and server actions. Let me quickly explain the structure of our app. Our app is gonna contain two components. The first is gonna be an email form component that we use to enter our form value and a subscribers component that displays the value we have successfully stored in a database. First, we will build a simple form only using React server components. Then we will use this library called Zod to validate our form fields on the server side. And finally, we will see how our forms work in absence of JavaScript, AKA progressive enhancement. Let's not waste any more time and jump straight into the code. And I will add the link to the GitHub repo in the description below. You can go take a look and play around with the code. So for this app, we are going to use Shadzi and UI's Next13 template and use the app router during installation. And once done, I want you to also install four components from the Shadzi and UI. The four components are the button component, card components, input and label component. After you install all these components, you should be able to see them under your component slash UI folder. So with the installation steps done, I have also cleaned up my page.tsx file and enabled server actions in my next config.js. For database operations, I have made a small file with two APIs in order to simulate the database calls to add emails and get all emails. You can replace this with any DB API layer of your choice. With this, our setup is complete. Inside our page.tsx file, we're gonna have a container for our app. And inside the container, we're gonna have a title and also a placeholder for our subscribers component. The subscribers component is gonna accept emails as a property. And in order to get this email information, we're gonna use a server action inside our page.tsx file. Once we have done with our server action, we're gonna await the server action to get the emails information and pass it on to our subscribers component. And then we're gonna create our subscribers.tsx file. The subscribers component is gonna accept emails as a property and we'll use the card components and the label component in order to build a list of subscribers. And once done, we're gonna import the subscribers component inside our page.tsx file and check if this is working as expected. As you can see, our subscribers component is working as expected. Now we're gonna create our email form component. This component will enable us to submit our email form data onto a database. This component is gonna have a label component and an input component inside our form tag. And on submit, this would call a server action. Let's go ahead and make the server action. The server action would accept the form data and get the email information from the form data and add the data to our database. And we're gonna add the server action as an action attribute to our form. And once that's done, we're gonna import our email form inside our page.tsx file and place it on top of our subscribers component. Our email form component is being rendered. So 
that's a good sign, but we would still have to submit the form in order to call the add email server action. For that, I'm gonna add a reset button and also a submit button for our form. and try to rerun the app. So now what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna submit a value for the form. You can see that the submission is happening, but the page is not updated yet. So since the page.26 file is a server component, we would have to revalidate the root route in our add email server action. And try again. And now if I submit any form value, you can see that it's being added. At the time of the revalidation, all the updates of the React server components are being applied. Now, if I go ahead and disable the JavaScript and then try again, you can see that it still works as expected. So instead of a revalidation request, the form tag is making a navigation request and it's trying to get the whole HTML back from the server side. So that is the reason why you can see that it's trying to fetch the whole HTML from the server side. And this is also called as a progressive enhancement. So we are done with step one and step three. Now it's time for us to do the step two that we talked about. For that, we're going to install a library called Zod and we're going to add a new file called Zod.ts. And from that file, we're going to export a simple email schema. And we're going to import the email schema inside our email form. What we're going to do right now is that we're going to validate the form. In order to do that, we're going to pass the email information that we get from our form data and pass it on to the email schema and then try to parse it. After we parse it, we check if it's a success or if it's a fail and we store error information inside a global variable. If there are no errors, then we're gonna mark it as null. Let's console log the error to see if you're able to print the error on the server side. You can see that we submit an invalid email. We can see the error on the server side. Now it's time for us to use the error and add our error states. So we're gonna add an error state to our label and also add a small label under our input field. Now, if I submit any invalid email, you can see that the appropriate error state for that specific value that I've submitted. And if I disable the JavaScript and then try again, it still works because we get the whole HTML document from the server side. And with this, you have successfully built the React server component forms with all the components being server components and no client components. Thanks for watching the video. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below or talk to me on my Discord channel. If you liked it, please leave a like and subscribe for more and I will talk to you soon.